If you have your Bible, I'd like for you to turn with me in the word of the Lord to the book of Daniel chapter 9. How many help me preach for just a few minutes here tonight? The rest of you can join in any time. I was praying one time and it was a particular place that I wanted to do real good in preaching. You always want to do good, but this is one of them times I really want to do real good. And I said, Lord, and you've heard this term before. I said, Lord, let me hit it out of the park tonight. When I said that, the Lord just struck me and said, I don't want you to hit it out of the park tonight. He said, matter of fact, he said, if you hit it out of the park, ain't nobody going to get it. He said, but there's a family on that third row that's struggling. He said, and if you can bun it over there, he said, that'd be good. He said, and on this side, about five rows back, there's another man. He's going through a hard time. He said, if you could bun it over there, he said, he could pick it up and that'd be good. So my mission tonight is not to preach a grand something you've never heard out of the park, not that I could anyway. My mission is just to kind of bun it and get it to you and let the Lord help you tonight if that's okay. Somebody say amen. amen. Daniel 9 and 19, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O my God. For thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And whiles I was speaking and praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And we'll conclude our reading there. For a few minutes, my intention is not to be too long, but for a few minutes, I want to talk to you on this subject. What time is it in Jerusalem? What time is it in Jerusalem? Before you're seated, let's go to the Lord one again in prayer and ask him to help us for the next few minutes. Jesus, we thank you for allowing us to be in this house tonight. Thank you for the incredible presence of the Lord that's here. Dear God, I lean on you heavily tonight. Without you, I can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. And I pray that my words would be yours, words of spirit and words of life that would go to every heart and every individual here, minister to every need and every request. Let us all leave different, God, than the way that we came. And we trust in you and we lean on you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. And you may be seated. If you are a part of Generation X or before, you know what it's like to live without a cell phone. And you know the struggles that we had, and they were real. I remember distinctly our phone in our home that was mounted on the side of the wall in the kitchen. When we first got it, the cord was about three foot long. But with a house of children and teenagers, courting and dating, wanting to talk in private, and the years took its toll on that cord. And after some time, that cord went from three foot to about 14 feet long. And it was placed in the kitchen, but 
we'd get on that phone and we'd take it in the bedroom and take it in the living room and other places. <laughs> Struggle. I can, I'm just old enough to dis briefly remember the party line. I don't have a great recollection of it. It's just a small memory. I remember picking up the phone one time and hearing two ladies talking. I hung it up after a time. <laughs> but that was it's the way we lived. That that old phone was a rotary phone. You had to turn the number and it would go back around and turn the number, go back around and, and no favorites and nothing like that. It took you a while to call somebody. When you called somebody, you were invested. And that, that phone, it couldn't do much but, but talk. You couldn't check the weather with it. You couldn't do a whole lot with it. But there was a few things that we learned as uh, kids that was interesting. And we learned that there's a number that you could dial and you could dial a story. Call that number and some person or recording would begin to talk on the other side of the line and start to tell you some random story. Can't ever say I listened to one all the way through, but I started many of them. But there was another feature just the old phone had, and you could call the time. For some reason, you didn't have a clock in your house. And a watch, and you were desperate need for the current time. If you knew the number, you could you could call the time, and the person on the other line or the recording, or however it worked, would would tell you currently it is eight twenty six p.m. And you hung it up, and now you know the time. Even in our travels today, even though we have the smartphone, I still use that feature. I still ask Sister Siri every now and then, what time is it wherever I want to know what time it is? Because in traveling, sometimes, as you know, time zones, you're crossing time, you leave central time zone, and you have to lay over in, in eastern time, but you're headed back to mountain time, but you're landing in mountain time, but you're driving across to preach over in Pacific time. And, and then you come back, and, you just, and, and I have gotten in trouble before, so I, I like to know what time it is, where I'm going, and the business that I'm going to be conducting because I want to get myself prepared for that time frame. And sometimes by doing that, I'll just ask, what time is it in wherever, and it will tell me. Being raised in church all my life, I remember Preachers would come by and preach, and particularly the elder preachers. When they wanted to say something urgent or important, they would preference the statement by saying, it's high time. And when they said it's high time, you knew whatever's coming next was going to be something important. 
As a kid, I really didn't know what high time meant. I really thought that, you know, whatever high time is, it's bigger than my time. And it's, you know, if my time's 828, high time is some glorious time frame that's beyond me and some way I need to sync up with it somehow. This high time business and the preacher's saying it's high time, so I'm believing him. So we need to get on the, get on the ball here. But I think what he's really saying is he's stretch, stressing that whatever he's about to talk about, that it's urgent and it's imperative and we need to get involved with whatever he's saying. And I just have to believe if I could say this in some ways, I think we were both right because I think that whatever he was saying probably was urgent. But I have to believe that there was some kind of divine time clock attached to what he was saying. And I needed to sync up with whatever he was talking about and whatever he was discussing and preaching to us. Amen. And so my message tonight is not necessarily it being high time or really urgent even though there are some urgent situations here but I want to be on God's time amen and whatever God is doing I want to be living by his time frame and doing things on his time clock and living on his calendar amen clap your hands if you believe that with me tonight I refuse to let this world tell me what time it is. Amen. I refuse to let the devil tell me what time it is. I refuse to let this social climate tell me what time it is. I refuse to let the doctor tell me what time it is. I refuse to let the psychiatrist tell me what time it is. If I need something from God, I'm going to go to heaven because I'm living on that time clock. Somebody come in with a need, but you need to dial the time and find out what's going on in heaven and live by that time frame. Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. yes. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 12. We find here that the Bible said now about that time. Herod stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. The Bible said, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. If I may pause here and say, We find ourselves a lot of times in life like these first three verses. Because the Bible said Herod killed James, the brother of John with the sword. And he proceeded further to take Peter also. I have to believe even though it's not recorded, that the church prayed just as fervently for James as they did Simon Peter. I have to believe that they reached out and cried out to God for James just as much as they did for Simon Peter. James was not an unknown personality. James was a part of the inner circle. James was one of the sons of thunder. James had an exclusive invitation by Jesus to accompany him to the Mount of Transfiguration. He was there with Moses and Elijah. He was an apostle of Jesus Christ. It seems to me that James could have been 
very useful to the kingdom of God in the coming days and years. It seems like Jane could have given us an epistle or two. Why, Lord, do you not deliver James from the hand of Herod and allow him to be slain and his life to be taken? And I really believe that the church prayed for the deliverance of James, but somehow God overruled their desires and led James come on home and meet him and a few days later Simon Peter is in the same situation and Herod has them no doubt their faith had been shaken a little bit no doubt their faith had taken a hit a little bit we prayed for James and there's no deliverance and it looks like the enemy had his way it looks like Herod is doing what he wants to do and now Simon Peter he's in prison and it looks like he's going to suffer the same fate what do you do when your faith has taken a hit and you didn't get what you wanted to get out of God and God didn't come through the way you thought he ought to come through and you're facing another dilemma and you're facing another situation I'll tell you what you do you do like that church somebody get the courage and call another prayer meeting Somebody get the courage and say just because he didn't don't mean that he does. Hallelujah. He can still deliver. He can still heal. He can still save. He can still move. Just because he didn't heal doesn't mean he don't heal. Just because he didn't deliver doesn't mean he don't deliver. Somebody pray again. Somebody believe again. Somebody trust again. He's still a deliverer. He's still a savior. He's still... Anybody going to help me on Thursday night? He can still save your children. He can still bring your backslidden family back. He's still a savior. He's still a redeemer. Pray again, brother. Pray again, sister. Pray again, saint of God. He's still God. Somebody ought to clap your hands to Jesus. Anybody believe he's going to do it? Anybody believe he's going to do it? I can't control what happened yesterday, but he's a healer today. He's a deliverer today. Here they are. James is gone. Now Simon Peter's in the same predicament. Herod has put him on a time clock, intending after Easter to take his life. And Simon Peter in this prison and the Bible said in the church ceased not to pray. I know you got some disappointments in your past. But don't quit believing God. Herod is uneasy in his palace. Simon Peter's been in jail before. And that didn't work out too good. He mysteriously got out. So he's uneasy in his palace. The soldiers, 16 of them, are guarding one man and they're wide awake. The outsiders are getting ready for no small stir. The disciples are in a prayer meeting. An angel is on an errand of deliverance. 
and it seems the whole exterior world is disturbed. Simon Peter's in prison, and I'm taking a little attitude here, so pardon me. Simon Peter says, they tell me, Herod's got me on a time clock. And I'm going to be killed at a certain time. But I'm going to make a call. Because I'm not living on Herod's time clock. And I'm not leaving on, living on Caesar's time clock. And I'm certainly not living on the devil's time clock. Uh, hey, Lord, what time is it in heaven? Hallelujah. Lord, Herod says, I'm about to die after Easter. And my times are numbered. Uh, there's tension down here. There's uncertainty down here. But what I want to know is, Lord, uh, what time is it in heaven? What time is it in heaven? Because that's what I'm living by. I'm preaching to people tonight uh, that you've walked in this house uh, and you've got tension in your spirit. Uh, you're wound up in your spirit. Uh, you're tied up in knots in your spirit. Uncertainties upon you. Uh, but I come to preach to you tonight. Uh, you're not living on the devil's time clock. Uh, you're not living by the world's uh, time clock. Hey, what time is it in heaven? What time is it in heaven? He said, Peter, we done had this conversation. It's time for you to sit down, take your shoes off, take your coat off, and go to sleep. I want to tell you, God can give you rest in the middle of your unrest. God can give you peace in a time of trouble. What time is it in heaven? It's time for you to have rest. It's time for you to have peace. It's time, it's time for you to have joy. Somebody clap your hands to God tonight. Anybody been tired of tossing and turning all night? Anybody been tired of walking the floor? Anybody tired of weary? I come to tell you, take your shoes off. Take your coat off. And rest in the Holy Ghost. Rest in the Spirit. You're on God's time clock. I wish somebody that felt like that would take your coat off and just throw your hands in the air and say, take that devil. I'm going to get some rest in my spirit. I'm going to get some rest in the Holy Ghost. God said, I didn't put you on a time clock. I've done told you, Simon Peter. When you're old, they're going to carry you where you would not. And somebody else is going to gird you. And they're going to stretch you out. The Bible said signifying about what death he would die. What time is in heaven? Time to get some rest, Simon Peter. Yeah, because they're saying it's a totally different time down here. But I'm living on heaven's time frame. I'm about to die, huh? Okay, okay. My life's about to be taken. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 got you. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. What are you doing? I'm going to lay back here just a little bit. You couldn't kill me with an atomic bomb. The Lord's done told me when I was going to die. And you can't change that. You can stretch your hand as far as you want to. 
But when you stretch it to a man that's got a promise on his life, you you can't go no further than that. When you meet a man with a promise and a man with a word and a man with an experience, you can't go past that. Go ahead, my brother, get your rest. Go ahead, dear sister, get your rest. I got a word. I got a promise. I got a God. What time is it in heaven? You're going to be all right. You're going to make it. You're going to be victorious. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus one more time. Somebody ought to stomp on the devil's head right now and just crush it. I'm on God's time frame. I'm on God's time clock. I'm on God's agenda. Come on, Mississippi. You got a God. You got a God. You got a God. Look at somebody tell them you're going to make it. Come on, say it with conviction. You're going to make it. He's in. He's been in jail before. Got out. Herod don't want that to happen again. So he put 16 soldiers around him to guard him. Chains him up between those soldiers. And by looking at this from a distance, it would seem like God, if you do this, and if you get him out of this, you're going to have to really show yourself strong here. Because this is a tough one. He's in prison. They're getting ready to execute him. He got 16 guards around him. He's way back in prison. Lord, I just don't know how you're going to do it. I just don't know how you're going to make it. Sometimes we look at certain things with God as though... Some things are harder than other things. But that argument doesn't hold water. God has no levels of difficulty. It's hard for us to wrap our mind around that because we do. I've got things that are easy, and i got things that are hard. Brother Dylan, if you said, give me a handkerchief, Brother Cheryl, I'm going to say, man, look, no problem. There you go. Glad to do it. Anytime ask for me a handkerchief. But if Brother Dylan said, Brother Cheryl, if you don't mind moving that organ to the other side of the hold, you might appreciate that. I'd say, brother, you know, appreciate the confidence there, but from that napkin to that organ, it's a different ball game. I can do that, no trouble. I can't do that without a whole lot of help. And it's so easy to equate that to God because it's our human nature. But God doesn't have that issue, Brother Damon Tipton. God doesn't have levels of difficulty. God is not able to do some things easily. And then some things, uh, he has to call a committee meeting of the archangels uh, to get their input uh, on how to get this situation resolved. There is katasabukohushaka. 
There are no levels of difficulty with God. If you got faith to believe God to heal your headache, uh, that same faith uh, will cure your body of any disease. Uh, it'll heal your body of any malady. It's the same faith. Uh, it... I got to get where I can see you because I feel the Holy Ghost right here now. Don't let the devil rob you of your miracle because it's big to you. Because it ain't big to God. It ain't great to God. He is able. Somebody shout yes. yes. Somebody shout yes. yes. You got to look at here. We're saying, God, you got to really roll up your sleeve this time. You're going to have to really put on a show this time. You're really going to have to do something special because we can't see how it's going to happen. But when you begin to look at it, the Bible just says the angel came to him and the angel smote him on the side and said, get up, put your shoes on and your coat on. The angel even turned the light on for him so he could get dressed. And as he's getting up, the chains just fall off of his hands. And he followed the angel out of the doors that open to their own accords without any obstruction. While the church is praying uh, God is working God is moving uh, God is delivering uh, God is saving church didn't know it presently but heaven was on the move angels were commissioned Lights were shining. Chains were falling. Doors were opening. Deliverance was being delivered. Hell's hands was being tied. Don't quit believing God because he is presently working on your behalf. That awesome conversation God has with Job. And he tells him, basically, sit down and listen to God talk a minute. And he told him something interesting. And I say this because I think it may help somebody. He said, Job, I just want you to know something about me. He said, I just don't work in areas that you see. He said, let me tell you about things I do. He said, I send rain up on the earth where no man is. Up on the wilderness and dry place where no man is. Nobody knows it. Nobody's recording it. Nobody's aware of it. But I'm working. And I'm doing things that you don't even have a clue that I'm doing and I said that because I feel like somebody needs to hear this tonight. You may not see it right now, but he's doing things that you cannot see presently, but it will come in to fruition in your life. I hasten here tonight. We move to our text. Daniel is in Babylonian captivity. He's an older man at this point in time. But he's been in Babylon since he was a young man. He is here somewhere roughly around 900 miles from Jerusalem. He's a long way from home. His mind is on Jerusalem. His heart is in Jerusalem. His prayers are for Jerusalem. He is concerned about the future of Jerusalem. When they were in Jerusalem and the temple was present and they were worshiping in the temple and they were observing the offerings and the sacrifice, Every morning 
And every evening there was a sacrifice given unto God in Jerusalem. He's a long way from there. He's in a heathen place. He's in Babylon now. And he's praying. Oh, Lord, hear. Oh, Lord, forgive. And his prayer, you can hear the tone in his praying. And if you listen closely to the scripture, you can hear the fervency coming through. Oh, Lord, hear, hearken, and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O oh my God, and for thy city and thy people that are called by thy name. And his prayer to God is, Lord, I need you to do this for me. I need you to hear me, and I need you to act, and I need you to do, and I need you to defer, or it means uh, I need you to delay not. God, my prayer is right now. I need you to hear me now. And I need you to do something now. And I'm praying that you delay not. Amen. Is there anybody here that needs something from God? And say, Lord, I need something that cannot wait. I need something and I need you to delay not. Hallelujah. Musicians, please come. Anybody believe that God is able to hear a fervent prayer? And anybody believe God is able to step on the scene and say, hey, I could do it any time, but I'm here to step on the scene now. I'm here to move presently. I'm not come to delay. I've come to work on your behalf. Need you to delay not God. And he says, and while I was speaking, I mean, I didn't want you to delay, but that's pretty, pretty good timing there. While I was speaking, and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of the people of Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mount of my God. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer. I mean, I ain't even got done praying about it. While I was praying, even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision from the beginning. And the Bible, it's an interesting phrase here. It says, and being caused to fly swiftly. Brother, God put him in a hurry. Gabriel, I want you to get to Daniel. I mean, I don't want you to stop. I don't want you talking to no angel along the way. I don't want you stopping and seeing the overlook of the curvature of the earth. I don't need you to go the scenic route. Uh, Gabriel, I need you to get to Daniel, and I need you to get to him. Matter of fact, I need you to get there before he gets done praying because he needs something from me now. He needs something from me present, and I need you to get there, and I need you to get there now. Anybody on Thursday night, anybody here would say, Lord, if you got another one of them angels that can fly pretty quick, I could use I could use something right now. I could use a miracle right now. I could use a healing right now. I could use a touch right now. Somebody open your arms and say, come on, holy God, I need you now. Come on, holy God, I need you now. Somebody lift your voice up to Jesus.
Any young people need God now? Any young people need God to save your brother, your sister, your mama, your daddy? Any saints of God here need God to save your family, your wayward children? I can't wait, God. I need it now. I need it now. I need it now. Being called to fly swiftly. Consider. Consider. How would you know that an angel flew swiftly? He's a spirit being. How could you tell an angel flew swiftly? If he's a spirit, how, how, what sign gives it away that he got there fast? But here's a clue. The Bible said, and the man, Gabriel, he came in the form of a man, as angels did many times. And he said, being caused to fly swiftly. Swiftly, I'm no Greek theologian, but because of study helps, the word there, many people interpret it wearied. There's no way to tell that an angel would be wearied. But if he comes in the form of a man, I can tell if a man's wearied when he exerted himself to get to me. I can tell you, Brother Dixon, if he's wearied or not because he's been running. And he passed the other angels and said, I ain't got time for you right now. And he seen the curvature of the earth and he said, I got to come back for you. And he passed the Tetons and he said, I got to look at you later. And he passed some other greats and I got to come back for you. I'm getting there as fast as I can. I'm getting there as quick as I can. I'm telling you, heaven is moving for you. Heaven is moving for you. Heaven is moving. Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. Heaven's moving on your kids. Heaven's moving in your house. Heaven's moving in your church. What time is it? In Jerusalem, it's time for revival. It's time for a move of God. Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. And they got there as a man. And you can tell a man's wearied. Because when he shows up, he's like I am right now. Got here as quick as I could. Somehow Daniel knew that he was weary in the form of a man. God, thank you for not delaying on my behalf. I was preaching a service one time. We were having a great move of God. Through the course of a Pentecostal service, you know how they go from time to time as the Spirit leads. You just do your best to follow after God. In the course of this service, faith was high. And I made the statement, if you're here, and you believe God can save your family. You ought to run to this front and begin to praise God for what he's going to do. So in that service. I saw a young man run to the altar. 
Brother, he come with his praise on. Praising God and worshiping God. This man was, young man, was doing his best to live for God. He was living with his grandmother. Found the story out later. Living with his grandmother, trying to, trying to make it, trying to live for God. But his daddy didn't live for God. And he was at that altar with his arms a flailing, his feet a moving. Lifting up his voice, thanking God that God was going to save his daddy. While he was worshiping among others, I saw the back door swing him. And I saw this big burly man walk through the door, didn't stop at a pew but went all the way down to the front. Lifted his hands like that and began to reach out to God, big tears streaming down his face. People began to gather around him. Holy Ghost fell on him. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. This young boy is still worshiping. He's still worshiping. I didn't know what was going on. But all of a sudden, he finally calmed down and he turned around face to face with this big burly man that he never seen live for God. And he looks at him and he's talking in tongues and he turns back to me and he said, Brother Cheryl, that's my father. That's my father. That's my father. And I can see the angel. I did it as quick as I could. I did it as quick as I could. Is there any delay not delay not delay not what time is it in Jerusalem it's time to be healed it's time to have peace it's time to have joy somebody clap your hands to Jesus together come on everybody one more time I need you Jesus I hear what the doctors are saying, but what time is it in Jerusalem? I hear what the world is saying, but what time is it in Jerusalem? Somebody let out a healthy hallelujah right now. Somebody ought to shout, delay not. not. Shout it again. Delay not. not. If you need a miracle, shout it. Delay not. not. He said, and while I was praying, I'm 900 miles from Jerusalem. Ain't been there since I'm a young man. But every morning at the morning oblation, I don't know what Babylon's doing, but I'm on Jerusalem time. And every evening, at the evening oblation, I know Babylon's a heathenistic land, but I ain't living on Babylon time. I'm living on Jerusalem time. That's where my heart is. That's where my mind is. That's where my spirit is. That's where my faith is. Babylon said you can't pray. But Jerusalem says it's prayer time. Jerusalem says it's miracle time. Jerusalem says delay not. Delay not. And he said, and while I was praying, the man Gabriel, about the time of the evening oblation, I know I'm living in Babylon, but God's on Jerusalem time. 
I know I'm living in Babylon, but I'm on Jerusalem time. And God works on Jerusalem time. And God moves on Jerusalem time. Not on Babylon time. Not on Herod's time. Not on the devil. Somebody said amen. So, if you're here tonight, And you say, God, I need a miracle. And I need you to delay. Lord, don't send my miracle by ground. I don't even want it priority. Matter of fact, mine's so dire, I don't want it overnight. I need you to get your quickest angel. And it wouldn't hurt my feelings that by the time I got done praying, my body was healed and my mind was whole and my spirit was renewed and my outlook What's different? What time is it in Jerusalem? It's time for God to touch you. It's time for God to move for you. It's time for God to work for you. I know it's a vast congregation. I get it. But this is still a Pentecostal apostolic church service. And this is what we do. This is the business we're in. And sometimes you got to squeeze through and press through and you got to have a few pardon me's, but I can't wait. I need God to delay not. I'm asking you from the back to the front, if you need a miracle and you say, God, I ain't got seven days. I can't wait a month. I can't wait too much. I can't wait till next year. I need you to delay not. Somebody talks about we're going to see him in the sweet by and by. But God, I need you in the sweet now and now. I need you to step on the scene here. I need you to step on the scene now. Delay not. Come on, brothers and sisters. You got a God that can get there in a hurry. You got a God that can get there swiftly. You got a God that can get there quickly. I'm calling on somebody right now to step out in faith and put your way to this altar as quick as you can and say, God, if you're going to hurry, I'm going to hurry too. If you're going to make it, priority I'm gonna get there as quick as I can I need a miracle tonight I need a miracle Thursday I need a miracle now I need a miracle at 9 12 somewhere between hallelujah I need a miracle somewhere in praise of God I need a miracle delay not Mississippi, you're not coming to Sammy Sherrill. I've done my best to present the Word of God to you. If you want to respond to the Word of God, step out of your seat. Come down to this altar. Reach your hands out to God. Say, God, now, 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 now. I don't know what the doctor's saying, but I need to know what time it is in Jerusalem I don't know what the world is saying but I need to know what time is it in Jerusalem come on Mississippi this is your count meeting put your way in put your way through delay not Delay now! Delay now! It's 
If you're here and you can feel the pulse of what Brother Cheryl is preaching tonight and you feel like your spirit has reached out and you've touched the hem of his garment as he's walked through this service on Thursday evening and you firmly believe in your spirit that before you step a foot out of those doors you can have an angelic visitation and you can have a special touch of the Holy Ghost and things can be radically changed and radically altered in your life if you sincerely need God to delay not I want you to lift both hands to the Lord right where you are brother Cheryl that's me I need God to delay not brethren men of God if you're not praying I want you to turn to somebody with their hand up. And I want you to pray, Lord, Lord, delay not. Jesus, delay not. I'm on Jerusalem time. He's here.